takes me just a minute to get everything set up and it looks like we're good. Okay. How's my sound, everybody? Hopefully that looks good. <clears throat> I'm just playing around here a little bit with my camera so I can see the chat. I think I'll put it on over here. Hey, Tong, how are you? Oh, it sounds good? Okay, good. All right. Well, I guess I'll cut my music here because it's a little loud. And um, let's go ahead and start painting. I'm going to try to get my chat in the view as much as I can. All right. <clears throat> so... Um, Boy, this is, seems a little bit laggy today. I'm just... I guess it's all right. Okay, so... Um, go. Mute my sound on there. Well, anyway, today we are going to paint this um, cute little barn that you can see up here in my, um, on the top of my screen. And I thought I'd show you a few of my colors first that we're going to use in the painting. Um, I painted this the other day as well, uh, live on um, Instagram the other morning. That was kind of fun. I'm going to get a little bit bigger container of water here. All right, so um, basically in this painting I used um, Viridian. I'm using M. Grams because um, I think it stays nice and, and moist because of the way they bind it. Um, and I believe it's bound with honey. So anyway, these are my Viridian swatches that I've made. And um, here I've added a little bit of neutral tint, and here a little bit of burnt sienna, so you can kind of see what it does. This is with ultramarine, which you can see there's a little bit of that in my, um, in my sketch, in my watercolor that I've done. And then I put out a few more blues here because sometimes I don't want to, I want to use a blue-green and I'll mix my Viridian with some of these other greens. So just to vary it so it doesn't look like it's straight out of the tube. And I did that quite a bit in this painting. So in fact, where is the original painting? I'll pop it in here so you can see it. And in here I use some ultramarine and, um, and then the Viridian. And I've mixed in a little bit of burnt sienna here. You can see it's a little warmer in some places and cooler in others. And here in the trees, I've mixed it in with, it looks like a little bit of burnt umber. So I think it's a good idea to swatch out before you paint your um, whatever you're working on or whatever you intend to do it's a good idea and I've also used a little bit of um, it looks like it was Quinn Magenta so I'll put a little bit of that in my palette as well 
And if you don't have that, you can use alizarone or another cool pink color, maybe a little lavender or purple for some of the flowers that are on the um, the vines there in the on the barn. And let me. Let me just swatch out some of this. I just got a tube of quinacridone sienna, and I want to show you what that looks like. And, um, whoo, look at how bright that is. Oh my gosh. It looks like it's really fairly transparent. You can see straight through it, but boy, is that bright. And so what happens if I mix a little bit of my Viridian in with that? We're going to get a nice dark, I think. Where is my Viridian? I like to squeeze it right out of the tube onto my palette before I use it because it dries into a hard mess, a hard glob usually. And so using it fresh is really helpful. Let's put some of that in here. Oh, look at that nice dark we get. So I could maybe see that for some foliage, especially if you thin it out. It goes to sort of a, um, a nice mossy green. And if you keep mixing it, which you would have to do quickly because I can see already the quinceana underneath is, is staining the paper, I think. It's not moving from there. So, but you could mix it in um, to make a nice um, a nice green color for a field or foliage or whatever you wanted. All right. Um, you know, Quinn Gold is another color that maybe we'll just put it out. Let me just make a note here that I used Quinn Sienna here and Viridian. Um, I get tired of using just plain old blue and yellow together to make greens, so this is a little more fun. This is quinacridone gold. And this one's a Daniel Smith color. And I think if we mix it with the Viridian, we're going to get something very similar, but it's much brighter. Look at that. So there's another foliage color for green that we could use. Now I don't think we'll be using this in this painting, but it would work with um, more of a springtime painting or, um, or a, um, a tropical painting. Something to look at. But I do like burnt sienna and just regular burnt sienna with um, the Viridian. And that's a beautiful combination, that color. So let's just swatch that out for you. So this is Burnt Sienna, and I have it down here as well, already swatched, but... And this is M. Graham's Burnt Sienna, which I like really well. And here's the Viridian on it, or in it. <laughs> there we go. It's very close to the, the Quinn Sienna, but I think the Quinn Sienna is more staining. Okay, it appears to be anyway. All right. So probably easier to work with the burnt sienna in that case. And let me just look at the chat quick. Oh, hi, Anne. Hi, Sarah. Oh, and hello. Who's their apprentice? All right, Paulina, I gotcha. All right, is everybody ready to paint the barn? I know, Sarah, you're probably not gonna be painting the barn, but 
We'll take a second to look at the chat. Okay, well, we're gonna do this fairly quickly today because um, number one, I paint quick usually, quicker, and then I, um, <laughs> oh, there's, oh, that's interesting. Is everybody ready to have a nose? Oh, it's like transcribing what I'm saying. Let's turn that off. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. Okay, so um, I probably changed a setting somewhere. And um, so anyway, I have my sketch done here in front of me. <laughs> You're enjoying the show. All right, Sarah, have a spritzer. Um, so I have this sketched out already and um, I think you can see it I wonder why my um, let's go back here oh did I lose my connection no. No, no, no. Oh, you have your Chardonnay. You're good to go. Oh, good. Okay, great. All right. Um, so anyway, if you haven't sketched it out yet and you want to, it's just such a simple little um, scene. I mean, you've got a horizon line, well, here. And then um, just a very simple shape for the barn. It has this little lean to over here. Um, and a few, just a few shapes for things, and a couple of people, and a few lines, and you're done with the sketch. So, oh, the reason why we're going to paint this pretty quickly today, and we'll be done in an hour for sure. I'll be done with this in probably, I don't know, a half hour. but. Um, Alvaro uh, Castanet is going to be on YouTube and if you go to his channel um, he's going to paint a demo so I encourage everybody to go and watch him and you can um, in fact you can get to his YouTube channel now and get on the waiting list well there's not a wait list but there's like a you don't have to sign up but um, there's a reminder on there. Not that you'll need it, because I'll let you know again. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, let's paint this. And I'm going to probably not look too much at the chat. But while I'm painting, I'll try and peek up every now and then. And um, all right. So this painting is going to be a little bit smaller than the one in my sketchbook. The one I, you can see in my sketchbook, I did larger. And um, so it'll be a little bit different. But we'll try to try to make it as similar as we can. Um, let me clean off this palette a little bit. Boy, this is a mess. All right, I'm using a pretty um, good size mop brush and I used kind of a pinky, um, a real pinky sort of color in the sky and also on the, um, on the pavers there and I just took a very tiny amount of yellow ochre 
and I added a little bit of that alizarin crimson to it. And I have just the faintest amount of pink sky now that I can, I need a little more pink on there, that I can put on there. And it's really light. And I'm just going to wash it down. And as I go towards the bottom, I can add a little bit more pink, keeping the sky up on top a little bit lighter. If you want to leave some, little white areas up there for clouds, go for it. There we go. I mean, this couldn't be simpler. It's just a simple wash on top. Same mix now with the um, um, yellow ochre. We're going to just wash this across. the foreground here. And I'll make this a little bit more, less pink, more yellow ochre. So it has kind of an orangey, just a slight orangey color. Very light. Nice and loose. Now, just to put a little bit of something on the barn, I guess I'll add a little bit of... Mm, I really want it light. I think I'll just leave it and um, I'll just be putting a tiny bit of um, my light... Uh, uh, Viridian in here on the barn and I mixed it with just a little bit of ultramarine to get kind of a cool blue blue green very light wash of that and if I'm careful I can put on a little bit right now barely touching those edges and anywhere I want I can leave a little dry brush mark and leave a few highlights on there And I can throw in a little bit of yellow ochre into the mix, this leftover yellow ochre and pink mix, right in with that Viridian mixture. And it's going to give my barn a nice base, base coat there. And don't, don't let it run too much into the um, the yellow ochre you've already got here in the foreground. Just let it sit right there. Now I have to decide if I want to work back into this or if I want to dry it first. <clears throat> you can paint it all in one go if you let certain areas dry or um, as they're drying you can add things to it and it's totally up to you which way you want to do it. Um, I generally paint it in three steps where I paint this wash in and then I dry it off and I'll go in with my second wash, which I think is what I'll do. Um, it'll just make it a little bit easier 
to control things, especially for the beginners. So I'm going to turn off my mic here for a sec. Hey DJ, how are you? I see you on there. All right, now comes the fun part because you get to start throwing paint around. to start adding all the fun shapes and everything that's on top of this background. I wanted to show you this because we did it a few weeks ago and this is what we're looking for in some of the washes. So it's kind of nice to, um, this is such a beautiful wash and I was styling a painting after someone. Uh, and I thought he did such a great job. I, in fact, I probably wrote his name on the back of here. No, nope, I didn't, but um, look at that beautiful wash. So as you're going along, and we're going to be doing some of this kind of thing for some of the foliage in here, along in here, up here, this is going to be calligraphy. Back here, we're going to have some different tones, and then our shadows. So just remember, they're never... <laughs> that wash is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sarah, he did... I don't know, he inspired me, and I, I painted this after his painting. He lives out in um, on the West Coast, in Washington or Oregon or, or Seattle. I forget where exactly, but... Um, and I can't think of his name right now, but his paintings really do inspire me. They're beautiful. So that's what we're after. Um, and I don't probably have enough of that even in my, uh, in the demo that I did earlier, but uh, you can always strive to achieve some of that. And since we're talking about Alvaro, I'll show you a painting that I've done after Alvaro. This is his design, but sometimes I make up things like Starbucks and put them on there. And um, this is kind of the way he paints, very, um, well, he paints, you know, like a master, because he's a master. I mean, it's masterful. But you can see some of this here where the watercolor is going from this light viridian down to the yellow ochre, very light. Um, here we've added a little, I've added a little um, uh, Ked Red. And, um, you know, getting controlling it and getting it to do all this fun stuff, it takes a lot of practice. Down here we have the, you know, almost pure viridian, but it has, a little bit of something else mixed in there. And um, I think Viridian's a beautiful color to work with, but it can be um, a little bit opaque. So, um, I don't know, is it a natural pigment, uh, Sarah? I think, 
Another great artist. Yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> DJ, you go ahead and speak up. Uh, DJ knows you, Sarah, so um, he probably found me years ago on Twitch through you. I'm not sure, but I know he found me on Twitch. Um, but anyway, okay, so um, now in my painting, let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. So I'm going to pick up some of this burnt sienna and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of that viridian, like I said, and we're going to play with that color just a little bit. <laughs> From Sarah to here. Okay, yeah. See, Sarah, you send everybody over to me. And Tong is here too, right? Yeah, Tong is, she's here. <laughs> fourth year apprentice oh my gosh all right well I well anyway y'all are funny y'all are good painters um, now in here I'm mixing I have a little bit of um, this color on my palette and that color is Payne's gray and that's why I did that swatch because if I mix, well, here, let me do it again. Payne's Gray, in its straight form, has a lot of blue in it. But sometimes I don't, I don't want to use my, um, here's Payne's Gray. And sometimes I need a dark viridian with a dark in it. So, to make things like shadows on the barn, or what have you, and I'll mix a little bit of whatever I have that's dark. So if I want something really thick like this to make a dark line on the barn or in a window, there I go with that color. And then this mix right here, it's nice, but it's too gimmicky looking. So to warm it up a little, I put a little bit of burnt sienna in there. And now I'm rocking. I've got some beautiful tones in there and as I go down the page here you can see the colors that are just getting really nice and yummy in that mix so that's what I did in this barn and that is exactly what I need in some of these shadow areas so I just kind of start laying it in here and I'm gonna dip into my ultramarine blue because I want a nice shadow under this little ledge here. And I wanna vary it, so I add a little water in there. Since we don't want to paint straight out of the tube, we're always looking for some colors that'll just help change the um, change it up a bit. Now over here, I want a little bit more. Let's try to not screw this up. A little more Payne's Gray, a little more Viridian. You can see me mixing it here in my palette and a little bit of that mm, Burnt Sienna. And over here that line is looking a little too. I just want a nice shadow there. And under here there is a a deep dark near the barn goes under the roof so we can put this in here I wonder what Alvaro will be painting today <laughs> I have no idea uh, Terry are you here I don't know if she's here or not and 
Ann is supposed to be here, but I don't know. Anyway, DJ, you and Sarah can keep the chat going. <laughs> Make it exciting. All right, so let's put a few uh, shadows up there. Get that going. And while I have this little bit of dark on my brush, I'm going to do some of these things up here that I know I want dark, like that bird. It's kind of a strange thing to put in right now. Usually you save those little details for the end, but I have the dark paint on my brush that I like, so I'm going to use it while I have it. And you can scrape along here some other interesting marks for the details on your barn. And up here there's, this is kind of the fun part, you're sort of just putting in Okay, now let's pick up something with a little, just a real um, light warm wash to paint in some of these barn boards. Okay, and I just don't want the barn. It's got to have a little bit of um, warmth in there against that cooler green-blue color. That looks pretty good. And then there's a shadow side on this side of the this metal thing. I think it's a vent on the barn. I don't really know what that is, but I'm pretty sure it vents like... Uh, coming from Wisconsin, I know that barns can get very stinky if they're filled with animals and so I think that thing like helps that situation all right so there's that and then you can really just play around here a little bit put a little more shadow in that along there maybe in those windows add a few darks now I've got that this paints gray. Look at how dark you can make that mix and put in mixing it with a little bit of viridian, a little bit of burnt sienna, and I can start to paint around this figure. I need to watch my clock. It's 3.30. Okay, so we have a half hour longer. Plenty of time to get this going. DJ, you're up late, aren't you? <laughs> I had I struggled so much this morning with my morning painting that I've been doing. Um, it actually doesn't look that bad. I think I can fix it. I'll share it with you if if we have time after I get this one done. But it was. Um, I don't really want to start with this purple color yet. Let's see what other. Well, maybe. Just where her dress is. Just maybe I'll just use a little bit of viridian on her dress right there because I kind of want it to, to run into the barn there to make it soft. I'm giving her a magenta e dress. She's this this barn uh, at this venue is a uh, it's a venue. Uh, and this place is really, really nice. They have a hotel, an inn, it's like a four or five star inn, and they have, um, you know, beautiful shop and restaurants and, or whatever, shops and restaurants, and, um, 
this barn has a lot of weddings and functions and so it's kind of a cool place and that's why I'm doing it. So the little girl I'm thinking about the color I guess I'll just do it with the same sort of orangey color that I used. Her dress might be a little more A little more orangey. Maybe I'll put a little bit of pink in it too. There we go. All right. Putting some hair on this lady. Okay, well, let's get into the and I had on that guy. Sometimes I paint around and I put, I paint things that are colors that are on my brush to, so that I'm not always constantly, um, I mean, if I've got burnt umber or burnt sienna or something on my brush, hi Anne, and I wanna, and I need that for something, I'm gonna put it in there. Like this tree, we may as well start Get it. Well, this isn't a tree. It's a wisteria vine or something. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use it before I swish it out. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put just a little bit of this. Time to add a little bit of some greenery to this uh, this vine. And of course, as it goes up, it's going to get a splattering of the flower color. Now, I'm being very careful right now, but normally you know that I just let it rip here with the splatter. And it's also on the other side of this bar, this, uh, but I don't want it as prominent. It's just going to be a little shade there. And maybe this one will come kind of over, dancing around the top of the barn. So this is where, you, I mean, this is such an easy painting to paint, and it's one that you can really have a lot of fun with. So there's that, and now I'll put in a little bit of shadow back to the, and the more limit, the more you limit your palette, the easier it is to, um, to paint a painting, because there's not so many choices, and it makes it all harmonize together, and, um, It should make it easier. Now since I used yellow ochre in the um, in the sky and in the foreground, I can put a little yellow ochre here in this in this plant with the viridian and add it in there and make a nice wash. Maybe drag a couple shadows off of there. And maybe I'll put a little, a few more little um, detail marks on the barn there itself. And maybe I like this color that I have on my brush, so I'm going to use it to emphasize again some of these barn boards. Just another layer of detail that you can look at. Uh, that that the viewer can look at to say, hey, there's something here. It's not. Uh, it's going to catch my eye and be interesting for a little while. And let's put uh, here. I'm just adding some detail. There is like a little trellis here, 
and I want that to be nice and dark to stand out. I think it's cute under this little awning. And um, okay, so now the awning technically on this um, thing is a little bit of a cerulean color and you don't have to make it that way, but I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt teal to it. They have like a, I don't know, some kind of little canvas awning here. And I'll just add a little cobalt teal to that because um, it'll make it stand out a little bit more as an accent color. And then back to my Payne's Gray to get mix up a little bit of a dark for underneath this. And then this figure, this guy will pop out here. And I'm going to go straight across and just connect that to this foliage here on the side. And I'll add a little bit of that leftover yellow ochre up here on top. Mix some of that in with my mix of viridian there. And a little bit of magenta maybe up on the top. Just to suggest some kind of tree or something. Just make sure the edges up here. Make them interesting if you can. And then I can just drop in more dark into this mix where, you know, there's bushes or something here. And this is going to need a little more dark here too, so I'm going to try to mix a few more accents in there. Just get something going on. And that's kind of like, um, have fun, make it up as you go. Sarah, you're probably cringing because um, you would probably have this all drawn out, right? It's just a very different method. Um, I mean, I guess I know kind of where I'm going because I painted it before, and I did do a drawing, but um, every painter has their own thing that they do, and um, okay, that's enough of that there. I think I just want a little bit of splatter now to suggest a little bit of that. It's getting to where it's wet, and I just need to get in there and splatter a little and then get out of there because I don't want to. Less brush strokes are better to keep that fresh. You keep going back in there, and um, it starts getting muddy and not interesting. <laughs> You don't always sketch first, but usually I do for architecture. Yes, I do too. DJ. Oh, Tong has to watch the replay later because I paint fast. Yeah. Well, it's hard to do. Um, it's hard to do all these things, at, you know, when you're watching and trying to paint. <laughs> Sarah. All right, so um, why don't we go ahead and put in up on top. We'll do some calligraphy up here, and we'll add the lines for... I also could put... 
I could put in, I have a little bit of a, um, a layer of a, just a tiny bit of that ultramarine with the magenta, leaning towards the, the blue. I just want to drop in a little bit of that back here. Another little bit of something going on in the horizon. Or back in the sky, whatever you want to call it. In the way back. Okay. I think that's good. I'm going to just put a tiny bit there, too. I could have done that earlier, but there it is. All right, so now let's just go ahead quickly and add Viridian, Burnt Sienna, and I really want some Ultramarine in there because I want it to go... I want I need it really dark and I don't want it big a green mess. So kind of blue with a little more. There we go. So let's get some calligraphy on here for that um, tree shape coming down. And we can soften any edges on there that we need to. And while I have, again, while I have that on my brush, anywhere I want that really dark mix that I just mixed up, I can put in there, especially in any areas that you want to emphasize your darks, put them in. And then some of these We'll add just a few, maybe there's some whatever to suggest leaves or whatever up there on the tree. And you can get as crazy with that as you want. Maybe a little bit more. This is something that's really good to practice doing these little foliage parts. All right, so let's grab our burnt sienna again. And uh, I'm gonna use, whoa, it's kind of dark. Do I want green for that? I have a lot of green on my brush. Well, I'm gonna make a light pole here and another one there and then I'm going to add some more blue and then I'm going to put in these lines these calligraphy lines if I can get enough paint on my brush to do it and those just do them fast practice that too that's a good thing to practice get them going and use your whole arm to sweep across your page. This place at night, I'm sure it's, I've never been there at night, but I'm sure that it is a beautiful venue all lit up with these little twinkling lights. The inside of this barn is amazing, beautiful. So you can imagine having a band there and lots of stuff going on. All right, so there's that. And then <clears throat> let's quickly get this guy in here. And again, guess what color he's going to be? Like, he's going to be a dark. So, well, actually, maybe I'll let his arm poke through there. Well, I kind of like that color, actually. So. Mix up your burnt sienna or Payne's gray. Payne's gray is not a color I use very often, by the way, but I do like it for making darks. Um, you can use neutral tint if you want. 
You can use, I don't know, Alvaro's got a bunch of grays out now. He's got Caliente gray and some other custom colors from Daniel Smith. Um, I don't know, what else do people use for their darks to mix good darks? Oh, um, you can use like a indie blue or um, if you want it to go really like midnight bluish. All right, so there's the guy. There's the dog. Um, let's see, let's get his, let's get this guy's arm in here maybe with a little red tint there. This lady and her daughter. Just put put that in there and suggest that. I'm gonna put the little collar on the dog. Um, maybe we'll put a face on him. And I'll put a little shadow up there. Maybe add a little more shadow there. And, um, oops. Oh boy, I got a lot of, that looks nice. Now I have twin um, I have twin trees happening. Try to make them a little bit different. Like one maybe different some different colors than the other. All right, well, let's put our shadows in, and um, I see something else here I want. It's just like one of these lines I want to be purple. I want to cross that over. There we go. Maybe another one there. And maybe this telephone pole could be a little darker there. Got something happening there. A few little bits around. For details and I would like a little shadow a little shadow on this side of this tree so we'll make some shadow coming off of that and some there and now it's time for the scary part for me which is always these shadows across the front but before I do that I want some of this magenta down here. Just a little accent of that across the patio. Don't ask me why. I just feel like it helps to tie in this wisteria stuff. And um, I can bring it down across the patio really as much as I want. I can go right over the top of that dog. He's not going anywhere. And it can be just a soft uh, texture on the patio. And then I can really go in with my Viridian again, mix it up with some blue, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to create a nice shadow color. I think it works well with ultramarine. And if I get it thick enough, I should have grabbed a different brush, but we'll use this one. I'm getting it really wet, and I'm just going for it here to suggest. Oh, they're spicy. <laughs> Hi, spicy. Yeah, I know. I'm back on uh, YouTube today. So there's some tree shadows coming from the other direction and maybe we'll just put shadows right under these guys like that and um, can splatter in 
and maybe just a little bit there. I think you should all get your sketchbooks out and practice doing a tree with lots of shadows coming off of it in all different kinds of sunlight and directions and times of day. <laughs> Barns and purples are always a good idea. Hey, Laura, how are you? Laura, you came over from Sarah's stream too. I feel like this is Sarah too over here. <laughs> That's funny. See what happens, Sarah? <laughs> All right. We'll let that firm up just a little bit. And then I want to put in some directional lines on the pavers. So I'll just pick up a little burnt sienna along with that. Um, well, in, in my other one, I, I use a little burnt sienna with, you can use yellow ochre, you can add cad red, you can add whatever color you want. I think the burnt sienna looks nice because it's, opposite the green. It's kind of pulling a little bit of warm texture onto these uh, bricks. And so that's a nice little thing you can do. Let's put that in there. And then you get the perspective lines going into that beautiful barn. I want to go over there. I haven't been there in a long time. And they also have at this place the most amazing cattle. It's a very specific breed that has a white band around the middle of the cow. The whole cow has um, a white, like a white spot all around the center of its belly and the rest of the cow is black. It's amazing. If you look on their website for Farrington Village, you'll see it. Okay. Well, um, the only thing I haven't done is I have I don't have my darks dark enough inside this, so I'm gonna mix up some dark stuff again, and I'm gonna just take a kind of a dry brush and put some more darks in there. And then the other thing I could do is. Um, I can add highlights and a little more detail on these people if I want. Um, I might put a little bit more dark on the shadow where it's coming in on this side. Since it's still wet there, I can just add a little bit. And um, to think if there's anything else that I'm missing that maybe I'll stand back and take a look at it. Maybe just a few. Okay. Um, so I have to look at the time. 3.57. All right. I'm adding a little more color to the girl and the mama for uh, skin tones. And you can just use any light kind of color you want for that. You know, an ochre or a... Here I'll use a little bit of orange. Um, Cad red light and um, Hansi yellow or permanent orange. Now typically that's not great for skin tones, but um, if you dilute it with enough Cad red and make a light mixture, you can get a nice skin tone color. The dog. And then if you want to add a little white gouache for um, highlights on the people or the dog or whatever you can. Um, what was I going to do here? <laughs> you love how splashy it is? Ah, thanks, Sarah. It's the only way I know how to add 
um, to make it less um, to make it looser yeah Put that on there and then I wanted a little bit more a little bit more uh, this dark stuff right here dark stuff Now I'm trying to see if oh, let's see. It's a little bit too big. I may need to adjust hmm, some of the values in there. And as it's drying, I can see I might want to add a few more dry brush lines and maybe make the dog here a tiny bit darker so he really pops out. But those are little things you can, you know, that you see towards the end of your painting. You don't have to do them immediately. You can wait till it dries, see what happens. Um, A little more texture. There we go. And just a little bit more interest here where things are happening, or supposed to be happening anyway. And give her a little bit more pink on her dress, maybe. And you can style that out as you want. Same thing with the little girl. Just try to keep the wash um, nice and uh, translucent and mixed. Not just one color, but lots of colors in there. And um, then, of course, you can take your highlight color. Ooh. I put a bow on her head, I think. Um, give, we'll give this guy a nice white highlight there, maybe. And the dog's ear. And that's about it. So now we can go watch the master paint. And as always, I will try to post this for you to see. And thanks everybody for joining me today. If I could screen share, um, I would screen share Alvaro's live right now. <laughs> okay, everybody. How do I screen share this? Thanks, Sarah. Um, and Tong, goodbye, Tong. Anne, Terry, DJ, Laura. Everybody, let's go. Let's go watch Alvaro now, the Masta. I think it's spritzer time too, so, oh, I'm glad everybody enjoyed the lesson. That's good. That's good. Yeah, this is a sweet little painting to do, and um, I'll have a good look at it and see if we need anything else, and then we'll put it in the Sketchbook Sunday group. And, um, <laughs> Thanks, Laura. You like it. And, um, yeah. So we'll talk to you later. And let's go see what Alvaro is up to. Maybe I can bring him up here on my screen and then I can... I'm not sure how I would share that on here except to just show you. Here we go. Oh, is he doing a cease? Oh, here it is. Here's, he's live right on here. 
Oh, you like the Holbein palette. Yes, I love that palette. Hi, Ido, how are you? Let's see. Oh. I'm sharing Alvaro's screen, trying to share the screen here. Live demo. Pitching, a uh, painting, and then taking, you know, and spend time with them, you know, stay, Wait, what is, go to vacation. Oh, Francesco I Fontana. I think I'm pretty good at that. Not so bad, because we spend a lot of time, especially in the summertime. Yes. And since I'm, I take the chance to be flexible in my schedule. Um, very busy, but pretty Bye, DJ. flexible. So I take him to school. <laughs> well, thank I you, Ida. I appreciate class. that. I take him to, you know. I'm going to turn that one off for right now. Okay, I'll sign off. Everybody, we'll talk later. Take care.